good evening chairpersons and uh, as dr das have already set the context of diabetic foot as neuropathy peripheral vascular disease and peripheral neuropathy peripheral vascular disease and diabetic foot infection this is the triad which causes the major amputations so as he have already mentioned lifetime risk of people with diabetes foot diabetes to develop a foot ulcer is 34% means every one patient out of 3 is going to develop a diabetic foot ulcer in their lifetime <laughs> second infection is the most common severely and very costly to treat third dfu complication with high risk of mortality and morbidity associated with lower limb amputation even more costlier than five most common cancers and even the more uh the survival is five years survival is less than five more, uh, five common cancers and the diagnosis of diabetic foot infection is often difficult sometimes it's very easy and sometimes very difficult and which lead to the in inappropriate use of the antibiotics <laughs> this is from the 17th century national gallery london doctor said it need antibiotic patient was asking to the surgeon who was performing surgery you just be joking mate the bride went off floating more like it and for 300 years it was going like that so this is the 30 years uh, what we have learned by the benjamin lipsky he have shown that in the year 1960 to 2015 and his emphasis was given on past 30 years and what we come out with this new insights into the microbiology diagnosis and treatment of diabetic foot infections and the clinicians caring for diabetic patients should have an understanding of current methods for preventing diagnosing and treating the diabetic foot infection how initially evaluate of the infection so you have to classify mild moderate or severe and this helps determine which patient need hospitalization special imaging or surgical procedures as sir have shown the uh, one of the case and which patient is going to land with the amputation these are the common clinical practice we all find that this sort of infected foot in our day to day practice then you can see these are all commonly everybody in their clinical practice see this sort of patients who are having presented in the clinic this is a mild diabetic foot infection moderate diabetic foot infection severe diabetic foot infection this sort of infection and it might be limb to life threatening <coughs> then uh, you can say that there is a osteomyelitis of the bone sausage uh, uh, fingers or toys which are going to lead to the or uh, diabetic foot uh, osteomyelitis once diabetic foot osteomyelitis there risk of amputation is very high limb threatening infection most of the infection superficial infections are monomicrobial while the deep infections are polymicrobial most common organism is as we all know is the staph aureus and then comes the enterococci and then the enterobacteriaceae pseudomonas and streptococcus about the classification of dfi as professor das have discussed regarding the diabetic foot ulcer classification wagners and others i am going to have this about the diabetic foot infection classification one is the padis another is idsa so padis you can say grade 2 3 4 and about the idsa mild moderate severe so i am not going to discuss regarding this because i have to discuss regarding the antibiotics uh, regarding the evolution of the osteomyelitis occurs in up to 20% of mild infection occurs in 60% of the severe infections and should be suspected in any infected deep or large foot ulcer especially when the ulcer is localized to a bony prominence of the foot so what are the principles of the diabetic foot in, uh, antibiotic therapy oral antibiotics to mild to moderate infections parental therapy for all severe and some moderate infections duration ranging from 1 to 2 weeks for the mild 2 to 4 weeks for moderate to severe infections <laughs> these are the international working group diabetic foot guidelines Ad administer antibiotic therapy initially by the parental route to any patient with a severe diabetic foot infection and then switch to oral therapy if the patient is clinically improving and is able to accept orally and these are the empiric antibiotic regimes always remember first take a deep debride the wound take the deep tissue uh, take the deep tissue culture and send the specimen for deep tissue culture and start the empiric antibiotic therapy so this is one of the most important slide of all of my presentation the mild infection and moderate to severe infection mild infection it is the methicillin resistance staph aureus man mrsa on is the it is a methicillin sensitive staph aureus means msa so if it is a mrsa if it is a mild infection 
doxycycline and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole these are the most commonly antibiotics and which are effective if it is a mscc means methicillin sensitive staph aureus we can start with amoxicillin clavulinic acid and we can add either levofloxacin or ciprofloxacin moderate to severe infection so if it is the mrsa it's not work then linezolid daptomycin or vancomycin we are commonly using the linezolid which is having least side effect you doesn't require any doses modification in patients of renal failure and hepatic failure that is the biggest advantage and is available in both oral and iv forms and about the mssa then you can start with the either ciprofloxacin with clindamycin or you can start with the artapenem or you can give the ceftriaxin 2 grams iv twice daily and if it is a mrsa and which is uh, if it is a mrsa and having enterobacteriaceae pseudomonas in that situation you start with piperacillin tazobactam or you can start for the vancomycin or uh, or you can go for estionam but the simplest way how you can choose empiric antibiotic therapies non lymph threatening infection as these are polymicrobial not the uni, uh, monomicrobial so in that situation take a gram positive and gram negative coverage so you start with the ampicillin cloxacillin uh, uh, ampicillin uh, clavulinic acid plus ciprofloxacillin and you can for the lymph threatening or moderate infection start with the piperacillin tazobactam plus you can put the patient on the linezolid also and if the life threatening start with imipenem cilastatin plus ticoplanin that is the combination and according to the culture sensitivity report you can escalate or you can deescalate the therapy the definitive antibiotic therapy changed according to the microbial culture and the response of the empirical treatment and its duration depend on the severity of the infection in mild infection it should be 2 weeks moderate to severe infection it should be 4 weeks in the diabetic food osteomyelitis it should be 6 weeks so always remember it this is the duration for the diabetic uh, food infection then the recent crocken review on this topic indicated that randomized controlled data on the effectiveness and safety of topical antimicrobial for dfi are limited then about again it is for the topical antibiotics remember it there is no role of the topical antibiotics and it should not be used rather it should be discouraged the role of topical antibiotics in treating diabetic foot infection limited and outside of written clinical practice these all are the so oral versus iv antibiotics parenteral therapy is obviously you have to start in all severe infection and some moderate infection and once patient is able to tolerate orally then you can if oral antibiotic is available then you can start with these are the from the benjamin lapskis about the local antibiotics again povidine iodine chlorhexidine or any antibiotic neomycin polymyxin b mucopyrrhacin these should not be there is no evidence or published data on any role of these antibiotic in diabetic foot infections then this is a meta analysis regarding the randomized control trials of antibiotic use in diabetic foot ulcer infection focus on clinical cure and you see a total of 16 studies were included in this systemic review and study location and bacterial patterns varied with the most common pathogen being staph aureus most studies did not demonstrate a significant difference in clinical cure and pathogen eradication either in the comparison between systemic and topical antibiotics and in the duration of the administration some studies had similar characteristics and were analyzed to conclude these studies showed that artapenem had comparable efficacy to piperacillin and tazobactam mind it the only drawback with the artapenem is it is not effective against the pseudomonas if it is pseudomonas you should not use artapenem otherwise the biggest advantage with the artapenem is you can use it once daily and it can be given as a home therapy so it is effective against mrsa i have mentioned enterobacteriaceae it is mentioned and about the, uh, the other uh, methicillin resistant strains also but only thing if it is pseudomonas you should not use it is not effective at all against this and but it has been shown in these similar studies that piperacillin tazobactam and artapenem are same effective and the cost of the um, artapenem is lesser than the piperacillin tazobactam thrice daily and three times you have to give for the piperacillin tazobactam so we have used in uh, huge number of patient uh, i think maybe more than 200 patient where artapenem we find good but first we go for a deep tissue culture and send it for culture sensitivity and after that if we find yes it is sensitive no pseudomonas we continue with that otherwise we change it 
then comes this is a very important and new uh, this uh, uh, latest uh, guidelines uh, suggestive of the newer antibiotics but remember it all these newer antibiotics which i am going to show you these are not available in our country most of the antibiotics so these three things always remember about the staph aureus pseudomonas and enterobacteriaceae so current treatment options with rising rates of resistance because of inappropriate use as we were discussing during the food group meeting if a ulcer which is non infected you should not use any antibiotics if it is infected then only you start with the antibiotics so staph aureus the currently we are using either methicillin or vancomycin or daptomycin but in this situation we are using more of the daptomycin and methicillin as a diabetic food specialist not of the vancomycin because redman syndrome is one of the most common side effect which we have come across in the vancomycin and uh, in comparison to vancomycin daptomycin is very safe drug and we use it and uh, it's around 6 mg 4 to 6 mg per kg body weight 350 mg of vial we are using regularly our patient for the pseudomonas you can use piprasilin tazobactam or you can give the meropenem but regarding enterobacteriaceae again piprasilin tazobactam and meropenem but the novel antibiotics that could be used for the treatment of these patients ceftriloxane then dalvansin then telizolid and all these antibiotics these are not available and plazomycin which is a amino glycoside very costly the cost of one course of antibiotic for 5 days not for 2 weeks 3 weeks or 4 weeks in the moderate to severe infection when i am asking for 2 to 4 weeks therapy for 5 days course cost in lakhs of rupees and still it is that not uh, i can say approval from the any the, this fda or uh, our own uh, diabetic food society of india and all that so these are the antibiotics of the future if you use the antibiotics inadvertently and not using properly in that set so dear friends take home message dfi may often present without any symptoms so always remember it in mild infection you may not it just iceberg phenomena assessing the severity of any diabetic foot infection using the infectious disease society of america or international working group of diabetic foot classification and guidelines so mild moderate severe or you can say non lymph threatening lymph threatening life threatening so this is a very simple classification that is there and we have learned it from the our medical school days that the what is their purulence redness uh, less than 5 0.5 cm to 2 to 2 cm this is the mild moderate severe definition and antibiotics should not be started in non infected ulcers so mind it this is very important no evidence in favor of local antibiotics in diabetic foot infections mild dfi can be treated with oral antibiotics and if you think that it is both gram positive gram negative start with a combination of comoxiclav plus a quinolone either ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin because maximum evidences are in with them and they are effective against the pseudomonas also then severe dfi should be treated with iv antibiotics from the beginning and moderate dfi should be treated with iv antibiotic followed by the oral antibiotics so empiric uh, empiric antibiotic should be started in all dfi after taking the deep tissue cultures you should not wait that let the culture report come then i'll start the antibiotic no you should start empirically according to the guidelines or even every hospital have the got their guidelines so according to that they can start with it and you are thinking it is a pseudomonas if the greens discharge and all that long standing ulcers and spreading fast you can start the antibiotic which is active against or effective against the pseudomonas just like that treat diabetic foot osteomyelitis with antibiotic therapy for no longer than 6 weeks mind it initially we used to give it for 3 months i have used in lot of patient with 3 months even the diabetic foot osteomyelitis i have used the rifampicin for 3 months so we have got the data we have presented the paper last year in ac regarding the diabetic foot osteomyelitis and use of rifampicin and and uh, you know about uh, in the us fda and uh, in the esd they have approved the rifampicin only for the mrss that is there and that's collect the samples and then start the antibiotic reconsider need for collecting a bone specimen for culture undertaking surgical resection or selecting an alternative antibiotic regime thank you very much for giving me patience here